I'll tell you what. This, what, this, this is the month of October. And looking at the campfire here reminds me, when my grandfather was a child, my grandfather was a little boy, his grandfather would take all the children to a fire next to the cemetery behind the family farm. And so when my parents and my aunts left a whole bunch of us cousins together with my grandparents on Halloween, he decided, why not? Let's put the fire back up on the hillside next to the family graveyard. So after supper, he gathered up all the cousins and he took us up to this campfire ring by the graveyard. Now he had already laid the campfire and all he had to do was light it. And as soon as he lit it, he looked at my older brother and my cousin Bobby and told them to go around in the graveyard. You'll find sticks sticking out of the ground in some of the graves. You, each one of you, take one of those sticks and bring it back here and I'll tell you what grave it's from. Well, this is a pretty cool trick. So my brother and Bobby went in there and returned a couple minutes later with the, each one of them had a stick. And we're all sitting there waiting for something to happen. And my brother starts to hand his stick to granddaddy and says, no, 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 throw it in the fire. My brother threw it in the fire. Immediately the fire erupted in bright blue flames, stood this high. Granddaddy, ha! That's your Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Uncle Jesse used to work on tractor trailer rigs, trucks and tractors. He was a mechanic. And he returned one day to this very fire. And he was going to share some stories, but the fire sort of rolled over. And without thinking, Jesse started stomping out the fire. But his boots were soaked with oil from working on tractors that day. And the fire immediately climbed up his leg. Why well, we had to cut off half of his leg and put a wooden stump, uh, stump there in its place. And one day, he fell asleep here at the fire again with that, uh, stu that wooden leg too close to the fire. It burned halfway up before we realized it. He quit coming to the fire. <laughs> Bobby, throw your stick in the fire. So my cousin Bobby throws his stick in the fire. It erupted green, spread out nicely, climbed real high, and then settled back down. Ha, ha, ha. That was Paul. Paul was a fire dancer. Y'all know what a fire dancer is? No. Y'all, a fire dancer is somebody who can make the fire do what they want it to, can command the fire at will, like this. And Granddaddy waved his hand through the flame. And that green fire leapt up out of the fire. It grew real tall and then swished around the f all of the cousins. It circled us once, twice, three times, and then settled back down onto the fire. I said, yep, Paul was a fire dancer. He met his end one day when he saw his cousin Mark flirting with his wife. Old Paul conjured up a fireball and threw it at Mark. But Mark was a fire dancer too. Mark caught that fire, rolled it in his hands a little bit, and threw it back. Paul and Mark got into a bit of a hullabaloo that day. We ended up burying both of them. Well, we didn't quite bury both of them. That only thing in Paul's grave is a pair of burned up boots with charred toes in them. Just then, little maid Marion, the youngest of all the cousins, four years old, said, Here, Granddaddy, here's a stick! And she threw it in the fire. Immediately the fire erupted purple. It climbed and climbed and climbed. It spread out. It spread out bigger than this whole circle here. Why, we all had to back up because of the heat. And as we backed up, we kept backing. And some bunches of the cousins ran back down to the house. I got back just far enough so I could see what was going on. I was curious about this thing. And then the fire, through the fire, I could see my granddaddy's face. 
he had gone bleach white. He was scared. And little maid Marion looked up at him. She, he grabbed Marion's hand and started down the hill. He didn't go very far before he tripped and let go of Marion. He went rolling down the hill and that flame lifted up in its entirety and started following him, that following granddaddy down the hill. And when he laid flat down towards the bottom of the hill, that flame laid down over him. Said, you're good, grandson. But I'm better. And as that flame started to settle down on him, little maid Marion walked up and reached up to that big purple flame. And as she grabbed, she said, My granddaddy! And she grabbed that flame and it erupted into a roar of sparks that settled down on all the cousins everywhere. Now, last time I saw my cousin Marion was the day of her wedding. And it must have been about 18, 19 years later. And here she was in this sassy wedding dress. Folks in Georgetown still say that was the sassiest wedding dress they've ever seen. And his hat cocked to one side. And one of her nieces came up to her and said, Marion, make, 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 the, make the little ballerina dance. And little maid Marion slapped her hands together and then pulled her fingers up. And sure enough, there was a lavender flame dancing right there. And it was trimmed in lace white. And as she held it, it looked like a ballerina dancing around on her hand. And she looked down at the little niece that had asked for the dance. And she slid her hand underneath the niece's hand. And that flame danced on the niece's hand, just tickling the hand just as good as she could. And then Marion lifted her hand off. And the flame disappeared into a rumble of sparks. They were entertaining for everybody, but didn't burn a soul.